In this video, I'm going to show you how to recover a dead drive using SnapRate. The worst happened, you lost one or more drives. Don't worry, the first thing that you need to do is don't panic. We can recover all of your data. Let's jump right into it. The first thing that we need to do is we need to disable the automation script that creates a sync. Creating a sync will make changes on your drive and we don't want that. If you configure your deletion threshold properly, then the script should fail and send you an email notification. This is a good warning to go and check if you if you have a failed drive. Let's disable the automation first. To do that, we're going to use Vim and we're going to edit our cron tab. Now, the only thing we need to do here is we need to go at the beginning of the line and comment out our scheduled job here. And then we just do write and quit to save. So now we've disabled the automation. To check if we have a failed drive or we have errors on the driver raid, there's a, a good utility from SnapRaid called check. So we can run SnapRaid check. This will go and it will try to read all of your driver array and all your drives. And it's, it's going to tell you if you have missing files or if something got deleted or if you have an entire drive that failed. So in this case, we have 13,000 435 errors, meaning that one of our drives is failed or that we deleted a lot of files. If we check our drives now with LSBLK, we can see that we have our disk two, our data disk two, our data disk one and our parity drive mounted. These drives were full. I put uh, some files there and then I delete them just to simulate a drive failure. So if we CD into the slash MNT disk one, we can see that we have some files there and if we do the same thing but on disk 2 we can see that the drive is empty meaning that we lost all the files from drive 2. So if we do lsblk again in this case what you would want to do is you would turn off your server or turn off your machine remove the dead drive and then replace it with a new drive. Once we have a new drive it should be detected here so to simulate that I already added an extra drive to this machine so we're going to use our drive SDD as our new fresh drive to recover the data. First thing we're going to do is we're going to format and create a file system on this drive. To do that, we're going to use fdisk slash dev slash SDD. We're going to create a new GPT partition and then we're going to create a new partition and just leave everything default. It's fine. And then we're going to press W to write our changes. So if we do lsblk again, now we have an sdd1 partition. Now we're going to create a file system on it. For my preference is XFS. Just remember that the drive that you're going to replace it with, it needs to be the same size or larger to be able to recover all your data. Let's do our XFS as file systems. To do that, we're going to use mkfs.xfs. And then we give the path to our partition sdd1. So we check our drives again, they all look fine. Now we need to unmount all our mount points and then replace the drive. First, we're going to unmount the merger first mount point. To do that, we're going to use umount dash L slash MNT storage. Now we're going to unmount disk one. We're going to unmount our failed drive. If it's, it's still there or not, just remove it. We don't need this mount point anymore. And we're going to unmount our parity drive too. Okay, so if we check our mount points now, nothing is mounted, meaning that we can start manipulating the data. We need to mount the new drive in the same mount point as the failed drive. In this case is disk two. So let's edit our FS tab and then mount the new drive. Remember, we need to have the, the drive ID, so let's get the ID first. We're going to use ls l slash dev disk by ID. And remember our partition is SDD1. Here we're going to look for SDD1. And as you can see is this is our disk ID. Now we're going to go to edit our FS tab. Now our failed drive was drive number two. So we're going to replace the ID of the failed drive with the ID of the new drive. I'm going to paste the new drive. Well, it needs to be slash dev slash disk by ID and then the new ID of the drive, right? So we now write and quit our changes. 
Now we're going to mount all our drives again. Uh, so we're going to do mount dash A. This is going to mount everything that is on the FS tab. It's asking us to do a daemon reload. We're going to do it too. We copy that. Systemctl daemon reload. And now let's check our mount points. DF dash H. As we can see, we now have our partition SDD, which is our new drive, mounted in the old mount point of the failed drive. Now it's time to fix. First, we need to go and grab the name of the drive from the configuration file of SnapRate. And if you remember that our configuration file is in slash etsy slash snapRate.conf. So let's open this file. I'm going to open it using Vim. So etsy snapRate.conf. And as we can see, the name of the drive that is mounted into slash MNT disk 2, it's called data 2. So just remember this name because we need it for our fix command. Now let's exit from here. So this is the command that you need to execute to recover all your data. It's snap rate dash D. And then we give the name of the data drive that we took from the snap rate configuration file. So in this case is data two, and then we can give it a, a dash L and a log file. So fix dot log. This is going to output all the output from this command into a log file if we need to analyze any issues. And then it's just fix. So snap rate dash D, the name of your drive, if you want to have a log file for this and then fix. Let's recover our data. And as you can see, snap rate is going to go ahead and try to recover all the missing files from this drive. So it's done. It says that there was 13,437 errors and 13,437 recovered errors. So perfect. All our files are there. Now let's validate. To validate this, we can use a snap rate check. What this command will do is check your recovered data and compare it to the parity data to make sure that everything is good and that there's no corruption. So let's run this. Depending on how big your drive array is, this could take very long. In this case, there's not a lot of data in this drive, so it takes a couple of seconds. Just make sure that you have enough time to check all your data. Now that the check command is telling us that all the data is good, is not corrupted and everything is fine, let's go and do a list of our recovered drive. So we just go to CD, MNT disk, MNT disk two. And as you can see, all our files are back into place. Uh, congratulations, we've recovered all your data. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Leave any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. And I'll see you on the next one.